My client paid me $80 for this haircut. First, we're gonna comb his hair out and take it down with that three and a half. Being careful of the After this short video went viral and I got a lot of negative and positive feedback, I decided to come back with a full video version with the same client. And he also did pay me $80 for this haircut also. So I'm gonna show you how I achieved this look. Very simple haircut. We're gonna cut it down with our two and three quarters blade. So basically like a 2.75 blade with my Andes Zupra um, clippers. Now in the short, I did keep it a bit thicker in the short video, but this one we're gonna, he said he wanted a little lower so the haircut could last a bit longer. So notice just how I'm cutting um, and combing at the same time, pretty much. Um, I'm being careful on this side of his lineup. He does have a light spot. I pointed it out in the short. I'm sure everyone seeing this video has seen that short. Um, I'm also gonna repost that short as I uh, post this video. So start the first guideline to start our fade um, in general. Um, I got my wall magic clips and the levers fully closed. And this is pretty much just the base of the fade. This is gonna pretty much determine um, how organized your guidelines will be. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna show you my process of how I fade. I'm clearing out the bulk under that. So yeah, stay tuned. Um, I'm gonna be telling you guys which guards I use and stuff. And uh, this is a really clean haircut. So let's do it. Got my liners right now, just clearing out the bottom bulk. And now my lever's fully open with my JRL clippers. And I'm going up about an inch, giving myself room for the fade. And once again, just combing while I cut. Um, so yeah. Once that's in there, you're gonna wanna grab your red one guard. And same thing, but notice at the top, I'm kind of like flicking. I don't want the guideline to be too aggressive. Um, Cause you're just gonna make it harder on yourself to take it out um, once it's time to. Right under that, just close your lever. And closing your lever basically means moving the lever up to the closed position to make it cut even shorter. After that, um, I believe this is my three guard and I'm just clearing out that bulk up top. And after the three, you're gonna wanna switch to your two. Got my two on right now. Lever's fully open. And then as I go down, I'm gonna continue to close it. After the two, I grabbed my one and a half. This is an important guard, um, very underrated. It just like connects the bottom half of the fade to the top part of the fade. Very important. Highly recommend that you always use this um, when necessary. Sometimes it isn't necessary, but I always like to use it just to be safe. Um, so yeah, got my half guard on now. Lever's open, flicking out in between that line. And then I close it little by little. Um, I'm preparing to get out that bottom guy line. So yeah, now my lever is fully closed and there's no attachment, meaning there's no guard on my clipper. And I'm going up notch by notch. So I started with the lever all the way closed. And as I go up each step, I gradually open it. So I make it cut longer as I go up. And now we're just gonna detail with our corners. Grab some guards, do, do some detail work real quick on the corners, like near the hairline part. Same thing for the other side. Starting with our lever fully um, closed, clearing out all the bulk at the bottom. This side, I'm gonna do it a little different. I just be bored with the haircut. So like I switch it up each side I fade. Um, I got my one on with my detachables, but remember that isn't a real one. It's an illusion. The the detachable clippers, meaning the the Clippers that don't use guards, they cut way shorter than regular. So if you wanna achieve the same look, just do the same exact steps on the other side. Don't follow what I'm doing right now. I just got bored and started doing random stuff. Um, just cause I have the experience. I just, you know, I know how to fade with anything. So um, yeah, didn't mean to sound arrogant when I said that, but you guys get the point. <laughs> 
Let's get it. This side, same thing. Like, even though I'm using the metal guards, it does. It is a bit easier to fade with these guards because it's literally step by step by step. But it's more time consuming because there's no lever. So we're gonna touch it up with our guards. Got my three guard. Got my one arm. One and a half. And yeah, this is an $80 haircut. Um, that's what I charge. I charge 75 for just a cut. A lot of people had a problem with that. I get it. I understand. Um, you can't knock the hustle though. Um, this is a career, you know? A lot of people don't take barber and beautician seriously, but this is a career, a lucrative career. Um, is it a seven figure career? No, but it's a six figure career. I'll take it, I'll take it. Someone's willing to pay for a service, top quality service, charge what you want, charge what you can. Just detailing this side before we move on to the back. I really like the magic clips. They're very convenient. I used to hate them. Um, I'm sure you guys can find uh, a clip of me saying that. I don't really use them like that, but for the back, it was a little different. You had to spread out the guidelines a bit, but uh, same concept. So now we're just detailing. I like the detail with this clipper. Um, it gives me control and lever, like with the lever and even with the corners, I can easily flick. So for the hairline, we're gonna use the two guard. And as you can see, I lifted up all his overhang. Um, even though this lineup looks easy, it was actually not difficult, but it was, you know, it was in between because his hair is very wavy. So when you're cutting like waves, especially a lineup, like you have to kind of cut the crest in between the waves. It's like you're cutting a, like a half curl kind of, so like the hair doesn't want to lay down straight. Um, but we got the job done. Um, we did add enhancements. I will show that. So yeah. Switch trimmers just because I wasn't really feeling the first one. But I, every trimmer I use is for a purpose. Um, these are like my deep tooth blades so they can cut through waves very nicely. Um, yeah. So before I add enhancements, I like to detail the vertical bars first. That way, once you add the enhancements, you're not like clouded by the enhancements. You're actually, you know, you know it's good there to add the enhancement, if, if I made sense with that. Always make sure the hairline's crispy before enhancements, as crispy as it can be. So we're spraying it. I'm using my Tomb 45 enhancements if you guys wanna get this color so that your enhancements can look just like this. Link is in the description and my code um, is the fourth can for all products that you guys wanna use. It's a little discount section um, in the description. You guys can use that, those websites. Same thing for this side, detailing before we add the enhancement. And I didn't use foam on this because his hair was very moisturized, but it wasn't greasy. I even asked him like, what did he do? He just said he washed it and put conditioner. I'm like, sweet. It was super laid, super clean, wasn't greasy or nothing. So yeah, look at that wrist work. Once I added, added the enhancements on this side, I do like to do like a comb check and just reshape everything up just to make sure everything's, you know, laid down you saw those little overhang hairs using our shavers this is this can replace the razor in some instances and now we're going to freehand trim the top this is important because you want to get all the loose hairs whenever there's waves on top there's always going to be loose hairs because waves go up and down um, unless you really compress their hair then it'll look flat but waves are always going to be like up and down because they're 3d they're laid down curls and curls stick up this is the before this is how my client came in This is after the infamous $80 haircut. 
Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. Peace.